Hi everyone, I'm Vitya Plšek. I work as software engineer in uh, Moro Systems, which is my favorite uh, software development company in Brno. I, I uh, uh, code my applications mainly in Spring. Who does use Spring here? Okay, well. And also in Kotlin, which is my, uh, my preferred language. I would probably nev never go back to Java. Uh, who does use Kotlin? Great. And do you test your applications, your web applications? Okay, some of you. And do you want to? So let's, let's roll. Let's have a look on it. Sorry about, uh, sorry about that, technical, some technical issues. I will, I will not use this one. So, back to the, back to the past. Uh, how does a typical web application look? Nowadays, we usually have at least, I would like to use at least this, uh, front-end in React, Angular, or Vue, and back-end services we write in Spring, they are in cloud, so they communicate with other services, some, uh, some managed services, or third-party APIs. So, how to test those? You have probably seen ideal software pyramid pattern, which says you should have a huge amount of unit tests and lit only a little portion of end-to-end -end tests. And you have probably seen also anti-pattern, which says, which says having a huge amount of end-to-end -end tests is wrong. Hmm. Okay, but what do you usually test in your web application? So what I usually test? I write unit tests mainly only for validators or some algorithms because what to test in, in a complex Spring system. Sorry. Uh, I also write tests for database queries because we use Postgres and we try to use it to the max so we write very complex queries. And also there is communication with services. But main part of my application is provide REST API to front-end. And it can be covered with, with acceptance criteria from analyst. For example, it is possible to add, edit, and delete customers' branches, and, and so on. So I write a lot of end-to-end -end tests for the REST API, because I have acceptance criteria which REST API should met. But it means the anti-pattern. Is it wrong? Is it a problem? Kent Beck don't think so. He told me in a book, if uh, something has worked, do it all the time. So I try to. He also came with the test-driven development methodology. Are you familiar with that? Okay, and do you use it on daily basis in your work? But, great, but it's possible, definitely. But uh, what I have learned at school, hey, hey student, create database design first and provide services, DAO logi logic for all functionality and there, there is a lot of space for unwanted, unnecessary features. And as a software house, you don't, you don't want to do that because after that you can with REST APR and how do you test that? continuously debugging with curl or postman? And what about to test? Hmm, maybe later and uh, I will fix those I'm, uh, when I'm done, but usually you're not. And Catback said, now people, try it in different way. So how to develop uh, API according to TDD? You have acceptance criteria, you can turn them to uh, test, you can provide REST API for the tests, and after that, there is time for business logic. And after, after that, for creating services and database if it's needed. And continuously, can, you can run the tests to check everything you have done is correct. So I like that. But uh, how to do that and also enjoy it? You have to clean your testing framework and your space because your Tests are also code. So give some time to 
structure, uh, structurize it and make uh, use proper tools and uh, encapsulate what's possible. How can right tools can help you? Here is the schema of application and my tests uh, almost simulates the front-end behavior. I write them in Kotest, which is great testing framework for Kotlin, but it doesn't matter. The principle would be same in every single language or framework. I use an IntelliJ IDEA for running them continuously. I use, uh, when I use some mocking, I usually mock the whole services or adapters. I use mockK for Kotlin, but I prefer to use real database and managed services when it's possible because my complex queries or, for example, some elastic search testing cannot be provided by the MOOCs. And if you have some, uh, some third party APIs, there is also a solution. So let's have a look on them. Uh, everything is covered with Spring, which can help you a lot with that. Why I like Cotest? Uh, uh, maybe you are fam familiar with JUnit, main, main uh, difference is that Cotest utilize, utilize uh, running ordinary functions. So tests are functions, not uh, function calls, not functions, like in JUnit. It means you can structure them. So here, you don't, you don't have to read that, but you can see the structure. Like here I can prepare some data, here another data, here is test, I can create whole test suite here and uh, when I run it, uh, run the tests in IntelliJ IDEA, it looks like that. And I can run the single test in TDD or whole group of the tests when I want to. And this is the result. Great. What about mocking? MockK is great for Kotlin because in the Mockito on PowerMock you cannot, uh, mock, cannot mock Kotlin specific things like, like ordinary functions or extended functions. But I would say I don't, mock, uh, I don't mock services like that. I refuse to write copy of implementation like, like I have seen in many companies. I don't believe to those tests because they are fragile. So when I have some, some service, I never do something like creating mock and passing arguments, calling it and expecting. No, I would not, not do that. When I mock uh, services, I use mock k bean, which, I can, which allows me to replace it in a whole Spring context easily. So I can mock uh, service for database for, for a while or uh, some adapter of other services. When I have a third party API, WireMock can create test the double uh, over HTT uh, on a HTTP level. So we can just configure what it should should ret return and your ordinary REST API client will use that. And I also said that we try to use our Postgres to the max. So I appreciate tests over real database. In my data access objects, I uh, try to test complex mapping to the, to the DTOs, and if I have complex queries like get all listing that currently have one active directory uh, or delete all logs older than 30 days that had, have not been opened, it's quite too hard to write them on the first try. So if I have, st uh, have test, I can, I can run it continuously, but I need real database. So test containers is library for me because in my test, in a, it uh, runs the Docker container based on configuration, which I can specify, uh, specify uh, programmatically. Or if I use Spring, I can just provide a different database driver and it will start this container on this board with those passwords and it's connected to the Spring. And it's easy like that. You don't have to read that, it will be in the demo. But where are those end-to-end -end tests? Again, Spring with single annotation can help you run a real server with fully functional REST API and you can inject one of those clients which are already connected to it. I prefer web test client. It's, uh, it's most modern 
of, uh, of those. And you can see the API is quite comprehensive, but you don't want to write those, in, write those methods in your tests. So in Kotlin, or even in Java, it's is really fine to encapsulate those. I can encapsulate uh, those parts which are reusable over other calls. And luckily it looks like that. But I try to go further and create met methods for each endpoint and communication. Like uh, this extension method creates, uh, creates some partner, gets some data, and you can see it calls the URL and pass some value and return body into the partner DTO. If I do that, my tests are short and uh, this code is reusable, but it takes time, of course. And I also encapsulate data creation. Like you have seen on the previous slide, I just passed the data, so I can have some method for that and use defaults and rewrite only what is, what's possible. But what if I need to prepare some data in database? When, uh, when can I do that? And how? And how? I can do that using uh, REST calls, so create one, uh, check if uh, it's there, or I can create them directly in database. And I often do that. But when? I strongly uh, discourage you from uh, doing, do, doing that before all the tests. Do not have one single file which, which have all data, because they will, will become uh, tightly coupled and tests will uh, interfere with uh, each other. Rather do that before the, the test class or uh, even better before each test. And do not forget to cl uh, clean your database after the test in a tra uh, transaction for, uh, for database tests and uh, by deletion in end-to-end uh, uh, -end tests. Because tests will create the data. Uh, creates the data. How to prepare them? Similarly, like calling the endpoint, I prefer to encapsulate that. This is juke, but you don't have to understand or read. Just, uh, just imagine function which calls your, uh, your favorite um, entity manager and creates the data. But Kotlin can help me to provide really great API because I have some defaults and I have a context apply function which, uh, which allows me to redefine only those I want. And it's stored after that. Great. But what about the speed? End-to-end -end tests are supposed to be slow, but they don't have to because you can speed them up. Do not start your containers when using TDD. Uh, use reusable for, uh, for uh, test containers configuration, which allows you to start them for the, uh, uh, during the first test and after they are reused. So uh, tests uh, become really faster because it's like, okay? And what about your builds? In my Gradle build, we generate a lot, of, a lot of data, for example, for Juke, and we update our, our, our uh, schema, and there is a lot of other actions. Some can be excluded, or you can add some flag to it. And, IntelliJ, uh, and in IntelliJ IDEA, you can configure your test to use this configuration, and uh, it will uh, run the test with it and I would say that setting local level to info will also increase the, uh, the test speed if you don't need them in tests. Okay, let's do some live coding here because I have speak too much, so I would like to, sh to prove it that it works. I hope there will, will not be another technical issue like before. Uh, I will have really a small application which because we, uh, we don't have much time, has also uh, has some logic implemented. Uh, there is some small database with client which have offices, and my task is to meet uh, some acceptance criteria. I need endpoint for getting the client, and when some office is created, it uh, should be read with the client, as you see in the JSON. And when uh, office is deactivated, it's removed from client's list. Quite easy, but I think it's, it's good for, for I 
Oh, this is only technical issue. Tak. Great. So, IntelliJ idea. Hello. Here is ordinary Spring application. You can see there is some data source configured. There, is, uh, there are some, uh, some migration scripts. I have also Office Controller implemented for creating and deactivating. My, uh, the, my task will be to implement Client Controller. There is, all, uh, there is already some Client DAO, Data Access Object, which I have some methods. Great, there will also be my work. And I have some details. So, how to start? Hmm. When I don't know how to start, for complex tasks, I start with test. So first, first test. Okay, client should get existing client, and I would like to get it. Hmm. I have some ancestor here, and I told you that I can inject test client here, and here is my uh, my entity manager. Let's use them. Test client, and I would like to have some methods, like get client. Oh, it's here. Of course, we don't have so much time, but you can imagine writing it, and th that was the preparation phase I told you about. It calls uh, this URL and return client DTO. Okay, so if it's DTO, so there should be some name. And I would say it should be first. If you have never seen, uh, seen that, it's like calling method. It's call, called infix method, and uh, cotest is based on that because I can easily extend it by my other, um, own measures. Imagine JUnit if you need to. So I will run the test, and if it will be red, of course, because I don't have endpoint yet. But I need to have red test before, before uh, making it green so I can believe it. TDD says, do it in the most easiest way as possible. Okay, I will return it. Do not laugh, I will have working REST API after, after that. And the next phase is refactor. So if that's green, REST API works. Great, I, I can continue. Here is some, some data object, uh, data access object, and I would probably want it to be like, like that. Okay, but it will not work because it's not implemented. Hmm, maybe it's time to, to show you the mocking of the services, which is quite easy. Okay, mock bean, var, wait, init, client, go. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. and just stub it. Every um, get, every client thou get. Yedna returns client get uh, all in Nocharka first. Okay, if it works, I, uh, I know uh, Okay. Hello, live coding. Mm -hmm. It should be here. Great. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, that's the uh, that's the possibility of mocking the services or, or adapters, mm, but. But uh, I would remove that. Rather, I would implement it directly. Just blink. You don't. You don't have to have to understand that. It's just reading from database, and it will fail. Why? I don't have data in the database. I have told you that there is some DSL context, so I will create create client. And let's have a look on the method. I said that in Kotlin I can easily 
override that we're using context functions. So this could be this could be considered to be a real test. Green. I know that the service works. Next acceptance criteria. When Office is created, it can be read with the client. It will be the complex one. Okay, I like context. So offices and it should be read with client. Mm -hmm. And I showed you that there is already some create office. First is uh, client ID, and here I have some helper function, so I can use that. It's created, and I suppose, I suppose that test office, uh, uh, that offices should be, should be filled with one, one of those, okay. Here I will have client ID. When I run this structure, it will create the office, but it's not get with the client. So what is the easiest way to implement that? Okay, in controller, I will do some, uh, some messy thing. I will cli uh, call client DAO, and there is some method, and I will test that. Great, that works. But I don't want to do it like that, of course. Let's have a look in client L. Wow, 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 I don't understand Juke. I would rather to test it first, as I told you. I have client data access object test here. Please, please, some magic. And here is test for the, uh, for the offices. I have one office and I read it, read it and I, suppose it to be in the list. But I can see it, it's not, it's not there. Collection is empty. But I have test, so I can implement that in the same way like before. Offices, uh, offices, assigning, rerun the test. And it works, but my colleague in a review told me, hey, it's, it's Hibernate style, don't do that. Use rather that code. But I am not so experienced and I don't understand it properly, but I have tests. So when I rerun them, I can, I can see it's green. Great, so Rerun all the tests, even with the controller. Green, and back to the last acceptance criteria. When Office is deactivated, it shouldn't be in that list. Mm, quite easy to implement, uh, even in database, but I would like to have test. So, should. not be in list when deactivated. I can refactor it a little office and test client. The deactivation method was already here, I told you. So just passing office and after that, that I suppose it will be zero. We run, mm. I shouldn't run all the tests, just single one, it's faster. And it should be red because I can see the deactivated office in the list. Mm. Yes, uh, I don't understand Juke, so first I will modify the client DAO, 
data object, uh, client data object test. I will add last office, inac inactive office. I will use extension method. Okay, and after that, should not get inactive office. Mm -hmm. I can refactor a little. That's why I like structuring the tests. And client from DB offices should not exist ID. It's, it's lambda here, inactive office. Mm, what have I? Let's click, okay. here. Yeah, of course, it should be red. I was too fast in my mind. And here I can try to modify the modify the query. Active is to It's green. I will rerun all the tests. And uh, my acceptance criteria are met. And uh, even better, I have tests, so I can re refactor the inners of the, of the application, because rest is my, my main part. But do you believe that application works? You probably will not. So I will, I will run it. Mm, where I have it? I have it here. Run. It will start on uh, localhost, uh, localhost 8080, 8, as usual. I can have a look into database where I have client, have conf, and some offices. And I have Postman. So when I send that, I can see the JSON here. And when I set one of those to the false, I can, I can see it disappeared. So everything was, worked. Great. So back to the slides. What to take from my talk? Give a TDD a chance even for API calls. Uh, encapsulate your API calls. Use real database or services where possible. Speed up your builds and try that, enjoy that. Uh, I will provide you some links. They will be on this QR. And thank you for your attention and ask me anything. And I have some swag here, and for your question, you can, you can choose coffee, coffee uh, package or, uh, or dotted notepad. Or, or at least, don't agree with me. Sure? Yes, uh, what's the difference between uh, mock, uh, mock bean and mock k bean? Uh, it's because it's used mock k inside instead of uh, mockito. And it's designed for, uh, work, uh, for working in, uh, with Kotlin. Mm, okay. That's on, uh, only, because if I use mock k, I usually exclude uh, mockito from Spring. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's why. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Coffee or dotted notepad? <laughs> no, no, I have plenty of them. <laughs> Not plenty, but some. So, next question for co uh, coffee or notepad. No. For, uh, if I have any alternative for test containers. 
Yeah, if uh, uh, later in my career I just uh, just do TDD with configuration to the local local Docker, it also works. But we use test containers even on uh, in, even on uh, continuous integration. So that's why. Do you have some uh, Do you have some uh, problem with them or some reason to not use? Yeah. And I would say that toast, I'm not sure, but I would say that uh, it's possible that toast test containers also works in .NET. But I'm not sure here. But it's it's multilingual probably. Yeah. I'm I'm not sure, but I would expect something like that. Or you can you can just use that for test development of your application or run it locally, but not on say CE. But I w I would say that those tests are for me to be a faster developer, not for checking bugs. I would say. Yeah. Coffee or or, no, or notepad. Uh, it's some <laughs> Indonesia Java uh, Java. Yeah, I'm a Java Java also. Yeah, take Java. <laughs> Okay, next question. Uh, when uh, writing these kind of tests, uh, uh -huh. I usually have a problem uh, with the, the mock data in my database. So uh -huh. as the application evolves, uh, those tests uh, break because uh, now we expect uh, different <coughs> times. Like you do some change and half of your tests uh, break and each one in a different way. How do you deal with that? Because the data is incomplete, you know, it, in each, in each uh -huh. test. Here you added uh, just what the test yes. needed. Yes, I'm always trying to uh, add just what the text needed. So my, if uh, there is need uh, to have some predefined arguments in database, I will add them to the function, uh -huh. uh, to the to the encapsulated creation of the data. Uh, for example, uh, uh, keywords uh, keywords column becomes mandatory, so I have to put it some uh, put there some default, and they, it usually doesn't break my, my uh -huh. test. So, and I'm trying to I'm trying to fix those before making yeah. the changes. Usually. So like that, coffee or no, <laughs> notepad. Nerd, nerd okay. Yeah. Next question, please, if you have time. Yeah. You can use mock question. <laughs> no, no, but you can have a notepad if you want. Thank you for your coaching. So, yeah. sure. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>